Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Henson, president and founder of Agile Dad, and it's time for today's episode of The Daily Stand-Up. So without any further ado, let's get started. As usual, it's Monday. I hope you had an amazing weekend. I have a special treat for you. As part of our Agile Expert Series, you know, we've been covering a lot of topics, and we've been bringing in diverse groups, some people who are deep into the Agile waters, and some people who aren't doing Agile at all, but they're bringing you valuable information to help you become better at what you do. So today I have some very, very special guests with me. So I have Veronica Stewart, who is a business agility uh, and OKR coach, which is really, really interesting. And also, and of no lesser, might I add, Roxana Radlescu, I want to make sure I get that right, who is uh, an emerging leadership coach, an emerging leaders coach. So how are you ladies doing? What's going on? Oh, it's doing good? awesome on this lovely Friday, right? Who's well, not in a good mood on a Friday, right? We're recording on a exactly. Friday. So I, I got to make sure everybody knows this. We're recording on a Friday, but the broadcast is happening on a Monday. So, well, so that's we even better. We're, we're such in a high. So then when it comes Monday, we, we, we're bringing that energy right there for them. Now, I know what everybody's thinking. Everybody's thinking right away. They look familiar. If, if they do look familiar to you, the reason why they do is because they are the co-host for the Game Changing Work podcast. And that podcast is in growth mode like no other right now, which is awesome. I love to see when these things happen and when, you know, I can see women in leadership and other organizations that just that, that really things are just changing. But today I wanted to talk with you specifically about the modern workplace. So tell me, I, I can tell you now, well, I'll start with this. I go to places and coach all the time and train all the time. And what I can see repetitively is that people don't necessarily understand how to engage or they're trying to create environments of psychological safety in a modern workplace where they have newer generation individuals who are working and they're just not making the connections that they should. So tell us what you see happening in a modern workplace. Tell, tell us what you see and tell us where it's going. I'm going to let you start, Roxana, and, and probably you're going to go into the millennial generation, which is what yeah. we talk about a lot on the show. Exactly. Yeah, we, we do. Uh, what I see with them, because I work with emerging leaders who surprise, a lot of them are millennials, right? Because that's the kind of generation that goes into leadership roles right now. And what I see a lot is this clash between, I think this clash has been there for forever, but now it's more obvious between the, the older generation and the younger generation when it comes to I want to do things differently. I want to find the purpose. I want to feel that purpose. I want to feel valued. I want to come to, to a workplace that really matters to me and that helps me feel like I matter. Um, and that's where the disconnect is between the older generation who are used to doing things one way and the younger generation who comes in and wants to change things the way we do things. And that's really about all about the culture, right? The culture is how we do things around here that makes us feel successful. So it's in the doing, in the, in the how that we have this, this disconnect. And I feel like this where, where we look at, and that's why I love working with the millennial leaders is because they are right there in the middle of things, boots on the ground, ground and helping their teams right in the middle of the organization. Because if you have the middle who breaks down, which is what we've seen happening over and over again, then you have the whole organization breaking down sooner or later. So that's yeah, where and, Veronica and I are so, so, so passionate about and- Let's talk about some like statistics. For those of you that may not be aware yeah. of the millennial generation. So yeah. we're looking at 50% of the workforce right now. Oh, wow. And so most of them at the, the tail end of that millennial generation, that, which is um, 40, about in their 40s right now. So yeah. they've actually had a couple of lists that some of them are running their own companies. By the way, they are the largest population of entrepreneurs as well. Okay. So when you think about this, and this is something that Roxanne and I do, we measure impact and, and there is a certain proclivity, a certain energy preferred way, right, of people, what we call as the game changer. Mm -hmm. And I have a theory that most of the millennial generation, because of the, the era that they grew up, and I'm going to say probably even Gen Z as well, that's coming into the workforce, right. they have a higher inclination to challenge the status quo, because if you look at the descriptions about what millennials are looking for, um, they want purpose, they um, are, see the possibilities, they want options. They're the ones asking for choice at work right now. Right. So 
when we look at our age, which were zillennials, or if you look at the uh, baby boomer, boomers, um, you probably are a hit or miss when it comes to this essence of this game changer that Roxanne and I talk about. And so most of the ones that I have worked with, and I know that Roxanne, since you work completely with the millennials, is that they have this essence. They have this mid to high range of this game changer energy. And, and so they naturally, right? Agilist, right? You're, you're a fellow Agilist and Roxana doesn't know she is one, but I'm going to tell her she is one, is that you automatically see the possibilities. You automatically know there's something different, right? The word same and something different. It doesn't freak you out. Change doesn't freak you out. This generation, when you talk about these things, and, and you've probably gone into organizations and seen it yourself, Lee, yeah. they don't, they are all about it. They probably eat up that agile stuff, right? And so what we're starting to see, because of that 50% workforce, modern workplace, guess who's influencing it right now? You got the, it's funny that you're seeing attraction there too, because I'm seeing two sets of, of reactions. And let me tell you what I see when I go in. So the first thing I see is I see companies where, and, and this is real, by the way, this just happened to me. It's a fortune 100 company who will remain unnamed. I went into the company and uh, the, the executive leadership team brought me in and everything was good. And they wanted me to do an analysis of what was going on inside of the organization. It was great. But what I quickly learned was everybody on the ground level and everybody in that mid-tier, they were all screaming for change, Veronica. They were all screaming for change, Roxanne. And they were like, help me, help me. We need to change the way we're doing things. And then right before I went in to meet with the executive leadership team, I had someone come up to me and she approached me and she says, I'm so glad I caught you before you went in there. I said, yeah. She says, you know, we're looking for a long-term relationship with your company. She goes, so in order to make that happen, she says, we want to make sure that you you don't try to tell them anything that they're doing wrong. What we want you to do is take what we're currently doing and agilify it or, or sprinkle some scrum dust on it. Or, 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 or Yeah, that's what I, and I was like. I was like, so I can't correct anything you're doing wrong. I can't talk about anything you're doing wrong and no change is going to be made. So you want to do the same thing over and over again, but expect different results. You know, I can't, I'm like, last that's time the I, definition of insanity. I'm that's like, last time I checked, that was a definition insanity. of something that I knew, yeah, you know? Exactly. And you can't. And what I find is that we don't know. And that's a struggle for the millennial generation as well, by the way. And Veronica and I discussed it on, on our show as well, mm. where we don't know how to give this kind of feedback. We're scared when we hear the word feedback, right. we cringe. Because the way that we've given feedback so far was so critical and it, it was just criticism sometimes for the sake of criticism. It Correction. Hey, exactly. But it was even just, I see a problem. The way feedback works fine is where I see a problem, I, I'm able to express that. And right. then we look for a solution. If I don't know, if I don't identify the problem, how can I come up with a solution? How can I change anything if I don't know what I need to change? And feedback is all about that. What behavior do we want to keep? Mm -hmm. What behavior do we want to change? And how are we going to change it? It's easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. And, I and it's oh, amazing. No, I was just gonna say it's amazing because one of the concepts that I tend to lead people towards is a concept called grow. And I'm like, if you ever want your organization to change, you need to grow. You need to determine what are your goals, right? What are you trying to do? What's your reality? Where are you now and how far away are you from reaching that goal? What options or opportunities do you personally have to make a difference and how can you impact change? And then finally, this is my favorite one, Veronica, and I know you're going to relate to this one because I'm going to toss it to you. What will you commit to do today? What mm. will you do today to make change? And when, when you engage people in that way and you show people that, hey, they can be, there's a difference between enabling folks and empowering people, right? right. When, you, when you enable someone, you're, you're, you're allowing for bad behavior to become repetitive. When you're empowering, you're, you're uplifting and bring them to the point where they can make critical choices like Roxana was making and know that they're making a difference. So Veronica, that's going to lead me to my second question. So my second question in a standup is, okay, I've identified, I got this problem in my organization, either my voice isn't being heard or, you know, and we're the silent majority, right? Uh, and, our, and our voice isn't being heard. What steps or what advice would you give to someone who felt like they were in a situation 
what steps could they take to impact change? What could they do to help? Oh, our whole month of August is about influencing. (laughs) So this is right up our alley. Now, the first thing I always say is you got to know thyself. Right. And one of the things that we talked about, we always have a lot of goodies. So here's one goodie is really understand your language. And I talk about uh, the lab profile for Rochelle Charvet Mm -hmm. and the words that changed my book, which she talks about meeting at the bus stop. But here's the thing. What's your bus stop? And, And when you start to understand where you are, a lot of times when we're talking about changing, we're doing it from the point of view of what we think, not what they think. And so when you start to learn what your bus stop and the language and behavior that you use, which Roxanne and I actually did that. And we, we are, again, that we said we're game changers. And so we use a lot of language around options. We say different. We use a lot of languages around that. But guess what? When you're an influencer, it's not about your language. It's about going where they are and using their language. And so when you start to get clear about that, of who you're around and meeting them where they are, When it comes to change, you have to speak their language. You have to actively listen and not only what they say, but how they say it. Bingo. I couldn't have said that any better. That's beautiful. That was eloquent. No, but it's just the other thing I see with leadership and and I see this all the time is, and I'm sure you've all heard this before, CEO bingo, right? When they have the all hands meeting and the executive comes out and, you know, I wish I could channel it for a second, but it just takes me so long to get (laughs) up. I just want to thank you all for being here today so that we can talk about the collective synergy that we'll have together as we take things to the next level and accelerate our framework and and move things forward. And it's, it's that whole list of empty words uh, with the accompanying hand motions that signals that they're screaming, they need to make change. But what I just now witnessed or what I just now did for you to witness is a cry for help. Yeah. Because they don't know exactly where they're going to. And I tell people all the time. What does only, accelerate mean? What is the collective synergy? What, what are you trying to do? I mean, you're throwing out a lot of these buzzwords, <laughs> but it means nothing, right? It means absolutely nothing. Vapor. It's vaporware. Exactly. And it's, it's and, and I tell people there's only one thing worse than having some direction and that's having. No direction. No direction. And there's only one thing worse than no direction. And that is. One direction. They're horrible. Anyway, oh, yeah. They're terrible. No, but I <laughs> mean, the all be all where it, it's come my way and, and you have no voice in this matter. Yeah. Exactly. And that's not true leadership, right? We talk about traditional leadership versus um, modern leadership. Mm-hmm. Our whole uh, topic this week was, uh, which I thought was fun, feminine and, you know, masculine energies. Right. And so we, we know that when we talk about modern leadership is really taking um, in tune of both aspects, right? We know the masculine energy is all about goals and direction and, mm-hmm. and focus. And, and, the, and then the feminine energy is really being intuitive and, and being in touch of what's real and what's going on. So the whole vapor thing that you just described is, is not connecting to the people that you're talking to. Like, did they feel anything when that leader said something? Only if they got bingo. Only if they got bingo. If if you have your card and you get bingo, you get like free lunch. So that's a bonus that that really wants for me to change. I'm all on board, Lee. Sign me up. Free lunch. It's it's just, but you're spot on. It's just, it it blows (laughs) my mind. It blows my mind when I walk into companies I see is the other thing that blows my mind. and, And this is an exciting change that I'm seeing. So I wanted to make this my third question for you. And it's, and, and either of you can answer. I hope both of you will answer. One of the things that I traditionally saw for a long time, and I'm going to say it, is the white male senior leadership umbrella who just the C-level framework, the glass ceiling, no one could get through. There was no diversity. It was the same stale group of white cracker bread guys who all went to the same Dale Carnegie School of Business together and all bought their ties at the men's warehouse because you're going to like the way they look. They guarantee it. But but it was just it, it was that same group of people and, and it got old. And the lack of culture and the lack of diversity in organizations was driving me crazy. Now, the good news is I'm starting to see more diverse cultures in the workplace. I'm starting to see more empowered empowered women in leadership. I'm starting to see more and more women executives. It's not just Meg Whitman, the one, you know, they're they're starting to be just 
a ton of leadership responsibility and, and it's getting me excited. So I guess my third question is this. If you could offer a piece of advice to someone who maybe was uh, uh, someone from a different culture, someone who, uh, who felt like they were an outcast or someone who felt like they weren't like everyone else and they were just different enough that they didn't fit in and, and they were struggling to either find the right direction or find their right journey, you know, journey, trying, trying to navigate their way through the modern workforce today. If you could offer them just a couple of tips, what would be your piece of advice that you would give them to help them on their journey? What would you tell them that they need to do? Um, so, okay, I'll start. Um, I see that a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think we really need to make sure that this is not just a change in form, right. but it's also a change in, that's a deeper change. Um, and I would say, first thing, don't stop waiting for permission. And in general, stop waiting. Stop yeah. waiting for other people to allow you to speak. Stop waiting for other people to allow you to ask questions. Stop waiting for other people to um, give yourself the opportunity to grow, to give yourself, the, to give you the opportunity to become a leader. If this is what you want to do, go ahead and take it and create those opportunities for you and make sure that people know what you're interested in. I think we need to ditch that model where we're all waiting for permission from that white male leader model that you just mentioned. Because right. I think it's so engraved in, in the organizational culture, even though we're really making steps forward that, okay, we're, we're bringing more diversity in. Mm -hmm. um, and I see that at the operational level, at the day-to-day -day level, we still discriminate. We don't even know that we do that. Right. We don't even know that we're thinking it. And we don't, and I don't know what obstacles I'm putting in front of myself. So as Veronica mentioned, know yourself. So start with emotional intelligence, start becoming self-aware, start, start managing yourself so that you can also manage your relationship with others. So you have, you actually have a lot of control right. over how your profession is developing and over your life. You have control over your life. Nobody else stop waiting for permission. No, I yeah. agree. And just kind of expanding on control. Right. So I always talk about believing in yourself. Right. It starts with the self-talk. Mm -hmm. What are you telling yourself that is happening at the moment? Self-talk can be highly productive or destructive, depending on the stories that you tell. Right. And so when we are stepping into a situation that may or may not be swimming in the same direction that you want to go, you're, you feel like you're swimming against the current. Yeah. You have to be confident in who you are. Right. You have to know that you are something and, and that doubt isn't going to create behaviors or decisions that are not going to expel you forward, right? And then that's what happens in corporate world a lot. Right. We, we, as a culture, are all about status. We learn that from grade school. I was a, actually a former high school um, teacher. So I know all about the education system. And where we never really encourage, and it goes back to even the conversation we had on feedback and, and everything is, we, we never say that you are enough. Right. It's, it's always judgment right? And so we're always judging and self-judging and we have to stop, take, we have to teach people to be okay with who they are in their skin mm -hmm. because we can only to Roxana's point, control ourselves and you have to let go trying to control everyone else around you. Wow. And I, I think that's the perfect spot to conclude. Let me tell you, if you didn't feel chill bumps on your arms when she just said that, then you're not human. That was just an incredible dialogue. And I appreciate it because I think that the world starts with you making a difference, right? And I tell people all the time that, you know, the only way, no one can ever make you feel a certain way. You know, I hear people say, that person made me angry or that person made me, no, they didn't. You chose to feel that way as a reaction yep. to what happened. 
And I think that it starts with gaining that self-center. It, it starts with gaining. So I'm going to tell you the three key takeaways that I got from this discussion. One is that who you are is mostly, or I shouldn't say mostly, but a large portion of who you are is determined by what you can make of yourself and how you can dig deep and how you can find those things and how you can use those tools. The second one that I love from Roxana was don't be afraid. Don't wait for permission. Don't be afraid. Be fearless. Live your life. Do the things and go after your dream. Chase it. Don't let it get away, right? Chase it down until you make it, right? And don't fake it till you make it. Chase it till you make it. That's the difference. And then third is just that it doesn't take an army of people to figure out that change is necessary. When you do figure out change is necessary, instead of just being the person who screams the megaphone that change is necessary, it's helpful if you put yourself in that position and say, where do I play into this change and be an advocate for that change, but insert yourself into the change so that you can make it happen. I don't think we could have learned a better lesson today. And if you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't already go and listen to their podcast, you need to go do that right now. So last, last thing that you need to do is tell everyone where the podcast can be found and how they can reach out to you. If they have any questions or anything they want to talk to you about, go for it. Well, we're actually live streaming versus the podcast. Okay. We are not podcast ready yet, but okay. um, we are getting there. So you can check us out on the Game Changing Work channel um, on the YouTube or live on our LinkedIn profiles. We stream on both of ours. So that's Veronica oh. Stewart and Roxana Redalescu. You find us and connect with us on LinkedIn and you can okay. see us there on that platform as well. And I don't know why I called it a podcast. I knew it was live. It's okay. Because you know I, what? I the universe is speaking to us saying, yeah. go podcast V and R, RV. Should we do which one? Which one do we like? And uh, that will be our next thing. So yeah, yeah. again, maybe that LinkedIn. was a premonition. I was about LinkedIn to say. LinkedIn is uh, it, where you'll find us, right? It's not uncommon for me to get those wavelengths and just process them. I don't know what the deal is, but, th- but that has happened on more than one of these expert oh. series. I believe in energy and universe, and maybe you're just speaking to us, telling us we need to yeah. do it because we actually have yeah. been talking about that. Well, <laughs> you need to do it. Thank you for your time. I realize time is the most valuable thing that you have. And I want to thank all of you for spending some time with us. If you have questions about this topic, you can reach out to me directly or to them directly. And I'll be happy to put you in touch with them. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.